Welcome to this video where I'm going to be doing some token farming. Uh, I've gotten lots of questions over the years about what quests are good to farm tokens, and I'm talking about tokens of the 12 that you can use to, you know, buy augments from Lahar, the epic trader in the 12, but most significantly, you can use 20 tokens to purchase hearts of wood that you can use to true reincarnate or racial reincarnate. So I thought I'd do a video of my three favorites that I do, well, not every day, but I try to do them every day. And that's going to be Lords of Dust and Storm the Beaches and Bargain of Blood. Now for those of you who are familiar with my build and you follow my build, I just want to point out that I am uh, swapping out two pieces of gear for these runs just because I don't need uh, some high, I don't need high defenses for these, you know, low level epic quests, so I'm going to be using an, uh, the Bell of Warding because it has higher spell power than my my normal trinket is the legendary planar compass which I primarily use because it has ghostly but I also appreciate that it has some extra MRR and PRR and then I'm going to be using the dust, the light descends, and this comes from the Strahd raid as does the bell of warding because this has higher light spell power and radiance lore and I don't need you know I certainly don't need the blinding effect or the extra heal lamp that I have on my legendary radiant sickle. Okay, let's get started. Probably don't even need to buff, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Of course I have it. I really like to do this one. It can be done in about five minutes or so. And there are 12 collectibles that you can get. And who doesn't need collectibles? Now, if you were getting XP out of this, of course you'd want to get breakables or something bookshelves and things down there and some more in here. The first collectibles here. Now there are some other popular, well I guess most significantly like Devil's Assault is a popular token run. I personally hate that quest, I just find it extremely boring. I hate standing around and just waiting for mobs to spawn. So I don't like to do that one, but it can be a really good token farm, so I definitely want to mention that. You know, if a lot of times you see people posting, like, you know, quest complete, just, you know, free loot, please pass tokens. Or a real courteous thing to do is, you know, just get it right to the end, get the boss down to about 10% health, and then post, you know, boss at 10%, come in for free loot and XP, just pass tokens. So that way people are not getting, you know, the loot isn't as enticing as it once was, but, you know, if people can get some free XP out of it too, you know, you're more likely to attract some folks to hit your LFM, or if you got friends or guildies that'll pop in at the end to loot the chest and pass the the tokens, that's great. So just doing these uh, little side optional rooms just to grab the collectibles in there. Another collectible over here. So there's Devil Assault, if you don't find it too boring, or if you can get people to loot for you, that can be uh, a nice farm. Another one of my old favorites, I don't do it too much anymore because of the level restrictions, is Time is Money, the House Caneth Challenge. But, in order to get maximum payout, you have to be, I believe, level 21 to 25. So, you know, if you're over that, then there's not really any, you know, it's not, it's a really inefficient farm. But if you're level 21 to 25 and you know it well, it's just a five minute challenge and you can get, you know, about 300 ingredients plus or minus. 
And the thing is, those epic House Caneth ingredients, you can trade 300 for one uh, token of the 12, right there at the Challenge Traders. So if you have a tune that's level 21 to 25, and you're real good at time is money and knocking that out quick, uh, you can get, you know, basically like a token every five minutes. If you don't know how that challenge works, I don't have a video for that one, I don't think, but I do have a video for, I think I have a video for Circles of Power, and it's the same basic concept. It's just that, you know, the only difference between those three Lava Caves challenges is just that there's some slightly different criteria, you know, slightly, slightly different objectives and, and, and some different variables, but if you're just farming tokens, you just want to go for the purple crystals in time is money. And go for some, you know, there's some areas that you can go and get right there near the start. You put down a line, grab some quick purples, and get out. I had a slow week for videos last week. The only one I posted between the two Saturday teaching rates was the, the April Fool's video of the Reaper Life live action movie trailer. I had a lot of fun putting that together. Just started the Ginger Spices first Elf Life and Elf Lives are the final set that I have to do to get Racial Completionist, so I'm really looking forward to getting Ginger back to Endgame. I've been working on that project for a year now, and I'm planning on doing, we're planning on doing Reaper Life 2 coincide with my final life. I mentioned that in a video recently. So on our end, we're looking at about three weeks from now where we're going to be starting Reaper Life 2, starting starting that life and making the videos and so we could see videos posted in, in as soon as about a month. Maybe closer to five or six weeks. Here I'm just going to put it on auto attack and focus blast because I'm lazy. And I can just sit here and do nothing. My single target DPS, you know, is a little low. That's a that's a basically a standard cri criticism of like an enlightened spirit burster. Uh, I run this tune, you know, more as a, like a tank, so yeah, I'm not so worried about single target DPS. You know, I play for group play. Uh, and you know everybody's DPSing, so it, it, to me it's not a big deal. But my job is to, is to is to tank, to grab the aggro, and then I provide you know good supportive DPS. But someone on my build post was saying that they were spending some additional points in the Soul Leader tree to get the Consume and Stricken, which is great. And I actually uh, decided to dump the 12 points that I have spent in Drow and pick that up to play with that. And that was, that's a, that's a decent add actually. So, you know, if you weren't Drow, I would definitely, you know, look at that. And he had actually spent less points in the Tainted Scholar Tree 
which, you know, for me, I wanted to work up to Death Ward here. That's what that was all about, spending the 21 points here. I love having Death Ward as a spell. But if you didn't want that, you know, if you're using potions or something like that, really you just want to go for Utter Dark Blast. And that would free up more points to spend in Soul Leader, making your Consume and Stricken even stronger. Uh, I did, like I said, I dumped the points here, spent them in Soul Leader, but I really like the Dark Fire, you know. My choice of Drow, though, is just a flavor choice. As I've said in other videos, a Voodoo has always been a Drow, and she's always going to be a Drow. And that's just a flavor choice. But I, I really like the Dark Fire. Uh, I think, you know, f for just spending the 12 points in the tree, I found the damage that it does comparable to Consume and Stricken. But I really like the fact that it, like, pretty much auto hits and it has a really, really long range. Okay, now that we're done with LOD, we're going to go over to House D. and do Storm the Beaches. And if you're farming tokens, you know, you're going to want to do these on Epic Elite to be guaranteed a full token. And I'm going to go with the Spy Master. Because he just takes me a little bit closer to where I want to start, which is right here at this Ballista. And I can use Dark Fire to hit it from down here. If you have good range DPS, you can just pew pew them. But Dark Fire is really the only thing that I can have, that I have, that I can hit it with that does any amount of DPS. Now, a little trick you can do if you don't have good range DPS is, you know, you can just take any old throwing weapon and, and I'll, I'll demonstrate here. And you can get get the ballista's aggro see if I can even hit it there we go so I got the aggro and then you you get closer to the wall here and the ballista will actually blow itself up because it's gonna try to shoot at you but it ends up hitting the wall up there because you're so close now watch when it fires you can see it just lost almost half of its health there <laughs> and now it's almost dead after it hit itself twice. So really you can just hit that first one once even if you do have range DPS and if you and if you play it right then it'll it'll just kill itself and that one just blew itself up. Now we're going to come over here to this turret to get these three ballistas. Those three are dead. Now we got one over here on this turret. Don't 
don't forget your collectible here. Three collectibles in this one. So now we're at 15 between the two quests. 15 collectibles. Here's another collectible. That was the Ender Set proccing. I don't have the Finger of Death spell. So whenever you see that, it's the Ender Set. Now, the, there is one more turret that's way up top. I should have pointed out when I was out there. Which, if you, you can, if you have, like, a ranged weapon, there's an angle that you can hit it, and I'm, I, can, I can't tell you what that is because I don't have any ranged DPS tunes. But it's, it's, it's weird to hit. Like, you can't just target it and, and shoot it. You have to be at, a, like, a certain angle to be able to hit it. So, if you play a ranged DPS tune and you don't know you didn't know that then just you know just play with it a little bit and hopefully you'll you'll figure out that angle that you need to be able to hit it from the water but I am going to get that ballista from up here that ballista there I'm just going to use dark fire and I'm going to let it hit me because it not gonna hurt. If you're lower level, it certainly might hurt. But I'm level 30. And I'm just gonna jump down here to get this adventurer's pack. Now I'll go back in to get the chest to get the token. And there's going to be a trap here. Boom! There's another token. Now we're going to go up and get Bargain of Blood up here. actually tried to make this video a couple times last week and I was going to post this last week <laughs> but one of the times I was really tired I was doing it in the middle of the night and I just was too too groggy sounding <laughs> and then uh, I tried to make it again and I it just wasn't turning out the way that I wanted it to so I scrapped that so here if you're into collectibles and if you're not and just in case you don't know, they are used in Caneth Crafting um, in large numbers. So even if you're not into Caneth Crafting, you, you, you know you, sh you ought to pick up your collectibles because you might someday. Uh, and, and if not, then they are very valuable. So you can come over here. If this guy's up, then he's going to drop some collectibles. So you pick those up. There's three right there. 
on the way out here to Bargain of Blood. And then there's one more over here. Yoink. Once again, Epic Elite, so that we get a full token. If you don't do these on Epic Elite, you're just going to get token fragments in the chest. If you struggle hitting those ranged levers, try aiming just a little bit above them. I usually try to do that. Just aim a little bit above it, and it'll hit it. gonna go around to the left here. I could go over the bridge there, but that'll aggro more mobs if I go that way. Here you're aiming for the lever with the signal crystal underneath it. The other one would spawn traps. And here I'm just going to go chain shape and stick it on auto attack once again because I'm lazy. chain shape hits the other mobs. Might as well spawn those guys now. I don't think there's going to be any more trash mobs, so I'm going to stick it to focus now instead of chain, so it'll do a little bit more DPS. You can only do these once a day. You know, if I were to repeat these quests, there would not be a dungeon token in the in the chest until the next day, until you're off ransack. And I'm talking about quest ransack, and just in case you didn't know, you can type in slash ransack, and it'll tell you there. 
So storm the beaches, I got an ex epic XP penalty of minus 20%. So every day that drops by 50, whatever it's at. And uh, if you're at zero, then you'll know you're off ransack, and then you can come get your token. How long did that take? Four minutes. And there's our third token. Easy peasy. Well, thanks for watching. If you've got some favorite token farms that you like to do that are different than the ones I talked about, please make a comment. And as always, if you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube.